This is Talk of the Town, a weekly program featuring community events happening in and around Northeast Michigan with your host, Nancy Smitham, and get the latest from Alpena Community College with Dr. Don McMaster. And now, today's Talk of the Town. And welcome to Talk of the Town. I'm Nancy Smitham. My first guest today is Brad Summers from the Boys and Girls Club of Alpena. Hi, Brad. Hi, Nancy. Spring is kind of on its way here. Oh, finally. I know. <laughs> you know, as we're speaking, they're getting a big storm downstate, but I guess it's going to miss us, and we've been pretty lucky so far. Yeah, they said they called for six or eight inches here, and now it's like maybe one or something Yay! like that. Yay! Um, you know, as the as the uh, snow starts to melt, you know, we're thinking about how can we get these kids outside finally. Um, you know, a lot of these kids are just cooped up for the sun, sure. or for this, uh, winter time, and you know, it's a great opportunity for us to get the kids out and doing things and being more active and at least promoting that healthiness. Yes. So, you know, we're, we're excited for the snow to melt for sure. Okay, and you have teen night activities coming up and it's started out like kind of slow and now it's like crazy busy. So yeah, it started out, you know, where we were seeing just, you know, maybe 20, 25 kids a night, um, which is still pretty good. Which doesn't sound slow to me. Um, yeah, <laughs> and so as, as we've progressed and as we stay consistent with the programming and the offerings and the things that we're doing, um, you know, we've had more kids start to show up and start to show up. Um, you know, and it's recruitment for us as well because we really want to see teens walking in, right. in and out of our door because... They're you know, a tough age. They're a tough age and, uh, you know, they have that ability to to come on their own. Um, and that's really important because they choose whether or not they want to be in the building or if they want to go home after school. And they don't even have to be a member. No, they don't have to be a member to take part in this. Um, the kids get fed. Usually, uh, you know, we'll have pizza or we'll have subs. Um, we have some awesome uh, local places that have been doing some uh, some food for us, like Jimmy John's providing some, uh, some subs for the kids or Little Caesar's doing pizzas. Wow. Um, or John Benson doing pizza or something along those lines. So the kids are fed when they're there, um, you know, and they're also, they're running around playing basketball, playing dodgeball, they're interacting with uh, a caring staff that's there, you know, and they're also learning some, uh, some healthy uh, life skills as well, which, you know, how to eat healthy or, right. you know, abstinence programming on how to say no and, and not do some of these negative things that are, you know, going around in our community and, and uh, staying away from drugs, tobacco and alcohol and things of that nature. And you're, I know your big fundraiser, mentor, mentoring for kids' sake bowling fundraiser is coming up, and that's a fundraiser. Yeah, this is our this is our party. Yes. Um, you know we have a, we have a blast at this one. You know it's pretty low key. Um, you know there's a lot of work that goes on behind the scenes. The unit director Jen Dingman um, has been working really hard. You know getting things and prepping for this event um, as we all are. But uh, you know it's a lot of fun. People come out. Um, they're they're um, they're bowling. They're supporting a great cause. They're supporting the mentoring initiatives that the Boys and Girls Club has in our community. And really, it's all just it, it revolves around the engagement of the young people and engagement of volunteers in our community community to help the young people. So it's a you know it's a wonderful opportunity. It's a win-win. Um, sponsorships. You know we're taking we're currently still taking sponsorships. Uh, we're still taking. Uh, if you want to put a team together, just call us. Um, you know the the sponsorships are really low. It's $100 for a lane sponsorship and $300 for an event sponsorship. Um, we do a lot of marketing. We have banners made. Your name gets put on t-shirts. Um, you know, and this year we're doing a, a, a cool new design on the t-shirt. You know, I don't want to tell tell too many people out there what we're doing, but it's a lot of fun. Um, you know, and like I said, you, you just, you come down, you, you have a great time and you're supporting something wonderful in our community. So you have teen nights and you're doing special fundraisers for your mentoring program and that you have your regular school your activities too. Absolutely, um, you know, and this uh, we do a lot. <laughs> We're doing. We have our our hands in a lot of pots. Um, you know, trying to help these kids become the most uh, productive, responsible um, citizens that they possibly can. So we're trying to give these kids a lot of life skills. We're giving them a lot of resources to be successful. Um, helping with homework help after school. Uh, you know, we're also the the food program every day that we're running uh, that we conduct. Um, that's free of charge for any member, anybody under the age of 18. Um, you know, we're doing uh, and just a lot of the social recreation opportunities. Uh, we've got Trey's a, basketball league. Yep, Trey's got a basketball league that he does after school. Um, you know, and we're getting a lot of like the, 
uh, fifth to ninth grade students that are taking Perfect. advantage and having a lot of fun. Trey gets in there and he's head to toe covered in sweat by the time he's done, you know, with the with the program. Um, then we also have uh, Emmy. Um, she has a soccer league um, that we also uh, conduct. So we're we're really trying. We listen to the members. You know, basketball and soccer are the two number one sports that the kids want to play, um, and we're lucky that we have a facility right now that we can do that. Yes. So, um, you know, so we're, we're continuing to just provide as many resources for these young people in our community as we can. And you serve about at least 100 youth per day? Yep, per day. Um, so we're seeing about 125 kids a day between the two different the sites, um, between the uh, uh, high school site and between the, uh, the main site, the Landy Kingsbury site um, at 601 River Street. Um, you know, and the kids are, you know, they're, they're coming through the line, they're eating. Um, you know, we have Taco Tuesdays and, you know, we have uh, some wonderful opportunities for the kids to eat a hot meal on a daily basis. Um, you know, and it's, it's, a, it's a wonderful support that we can provide the kids and to the family structures, um, you know, being able to do these things for them. So it's... And the membership is $20 for a year. $20 for a year or $10 for the school, school year season. or $10 for the summer season. So it's, uh, it's very cost effective. Um, and, you know, just to have a kid, you know, attend our building or attend our program and our organization for, for a month is about $257 oh, to have sure. that kid uh, um, to be in our building. So, you know, to offer it for $20, um, you know, we like to think we're the, we're the best deal in town for kids um, because they're getting a lot out of it. You know, these kids aren't just sitting around with pool sticks for, uh, for six, seven hours. I mean, they're, they're learning life skills. They're, you know, they're being mentored by caring adults that are trained and qualified to do what they do um, you know and they're being able to you know interact with their peers and and uh, be able to take advantage of running around in the gym and, and having fun and meeting people yes those discretionary hours are the hours that you want to know where your children are yep the uh, out of school time is by far the time by far the most time when the kids get in the most trouble so you know for us to be able to offer a program where kids can come in after school and be able to take advantage of healthy activities instead of just you know negative ones um, you know is, is something that we strive to do in the community and if anyone out there's just wondering if any of these programs or or anything here is you know right for their family stop by talk to you talk to um, anyone that's in the building and just say hey we'd like to do a tour we'd like to find out what goes on and you know get your kids in here let them start having some fun after school and especially the homework help yeah that's that's a big one oh right it now. is you know especially with standardized testing and and things where kids have to meet certain grade mm -hmm. uh, yes. uh, parameters throughout the year now um, you know it's a it's an awesome opportunity for us to work with uh, people within the school system and uh, get these kids on track to graduate and to uh, to move on to the next grade level. Okay, we're out of time. I want to thank you very much for being here. I'll see you next month. See you next month. I'll be right back with some information from here on Humane Society following these messages. Hi, welcome back. As promised, my next two guests are both from here on Humane Society of Stacy Newhouse and Cindy Johnson. Good morning and welcome. Good morning, Good morning. Cindy. You brought some very special guests here today <laughs> that everyone here is going crazy about. <laughs> Stace, tell me about those puppies. Um, these are the nine puppies that were surrendered to us at the Here on Humane Society. This is Bam Bam, and this is Olive Oil, and they are brother and sister. And um, if people are interested in them, they can stop by the Huron Humane Society and fill out a paper application or do one online. And we know they're part pit bull. Yeah. And, and mm. maybe um, a little cane corso as well, um, which is another bully breed. Okay. So they're just adorable yeah. and they, their faces are all wrinkly and <laughs> smushy and they love to be cuddled. And hell, of course, you folks are spoiling <laughs> crazy out there. Yeah. Yeah, staff, it's hard to pull them out when you have yes. puppies and kittens. They wear a staff. Oh, we're taking care of the puppies. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh, everybody's back taking care of the puppies. <laughs> yep. So, Cindy, what do we have to do to adopt one of these beautiful babies? Well, right now we're just accepting applications for them. Okay. So, um, uh, Stacy's going through those apps. Um, she may give you a call, ask some questions um, if she has them about your application. But Stacy will start deciding in a couple of weeks um, who she's going to um, allow to adopt them. Okay, I like that. Yeah. So Stacey, you have some new equipment, I understand. Yes. What did you get? Oh, we got some good stuff, Nancy. Um, from Banner Realty, Margie um, chose us as her wish list, I guess you could say contestants. <laughs> and we received um, an ultrasound machi machine and we also received an incubator. Ooh. So that's gonna help us out immensely. Um, one, the ultrasound machine, we can check mama kitties if they are pregnant 
before we send them to the vets to get them spayed. Okay. Um, also, we can use the ultrasound to check for like stones in a bladder or you know possibly um, foreign objects as well, and then ship them off to the um, veterinarian. Um, and the incubator is to warm up babies like um, brand new kittens or puppies. Um, it also has a nebulizer and of course oxygen on it which will stabilize them in there and if they have upper respiratories and help them breathe. Wonderful. And Cindy, you know the day of the Fur Bowl now? Yes, we do. The Fur Bowl is April 24th. Okay. Um, that's our bowling event where um, people get teams of five together. Um, we'll get that the packets and stuff ready probably within the next couple of weeks those will be available and we'll make sure that everyone knows where and when they're available so you can start getting your teams together. Okay. Um, but it's a fun event. It is. And it's very important for the Humane Society that we raise some money at this event. Yes, it is. And I'm sure sponsorships are available. Sponsorships are available for the Fur Bowl. Um, and we'll be going around. So if you want to sponsor um, at the Fur Bowl, the sponsorships for the banners are $100. Okay. So it's a good way to get your business out yes. there. Yes. Um, so on all the lanes um, that all the logos will be and it's, it's, it helps us raise funds and um, helps businesses get their name out there as well. Okay, then your major fundraiser is, is starting and going on now, the Bootleggers Ball. Yes, we have been working hard on this one. So um, that is um, April 4th, the Bootleggers okay. Ball. Um, there's um, opportunity for sponsorships uh, at, on that as well. Our main, our presenting, per, excuse me, our presenting sponsor this year is is Cliff Anschutz. Oh, very Chevrolet. good. They are so they They're are so good to just us. Just wonderful people in um, this community. Yes, they are. Uh, anyone who is associated with them, uh, they are. <laughs> a blessing. So they are presenting sponsors, but there's lots of other sponsorships available. I saw one as low as $15. As $15, you can get a sponsorship and sponsor a cat or a dog for the tables. So, um, and we can, in, uh, people buy two, three of those, but you, they're all the, all the way up to $500 sponsorship. So if you're interested, if you're a business or just a person who wants to sponsor, let us know, call the shelter, um, ask to talk to me, and I'll put you in touch with somebody on fundraising and we'll make that happen. And you're also looking for um, items? Items for, we have a live and silent auction, um, just like we do every year. So if you're a business, if you craft, if you do anything and want to donate to us to help us raise funds. If um, you're a chef, if, chef, if you have yes. a pizza oven at your house. That's right. <laughs> um, all of those are really good ideas. Um, um, we've got some good stuff coming in. So um, it's going to be a really fun event this year. So, but if you want to donate, um, get a hold of us um, and we'll pick up, we'll, um, whatever we need to do to make it happen, we'll make it happen. And if you want a table with all your friends, make sure you call and get your tickets in advance so you can all sit together. Yes, and tickets are, uh, tickets are $50 a piece, but if you buy a table of eight, um, you'll get two free tickets, makes it a table of ten. Oh, very good. So, you know, gather your friends and, and, and get a table and, and you also get a deal as well. Yes, very good. Yeah. And it's just a really fun event too. It is. You keep it, the action keeps it moving all, all the time and it keeps going and it's really a fun event to go to. Yes, it is. And like we said, it's very important we raise these funds because we have animals to take care of. <laughs> yes, we do. <laughs> and I know you have cats now. We do. Um, we just had um, nine cats brought in the other day that were kind of sick. Mm -hmm. We actually used our incubator on Ooh. them for the first two days. Um, we put them in there for a while, warmed them up. Um, I think it's really helped them. Yeah. Um, in, in a matter of a couple of days, they've just come leaps and bounds, um, especially the teeny, teeny ones that were really sick. Um, they're, uh, everyone's improving. So the equipment came in handy. At, at perfect timing. Perfect timing. We Thank just you, Margie, got from Banner Realty. Yes. Thank you, Margie. Yes, and the Community Foundation was instrumental in the incubator as well. Oh, very so, good. Yes. So we got a grant to pay for part of that. So, so you have cats and kittens, yes. and you have any other dogs right now? Uh, no, just the puppies right okay. now. Okay. Yeah. And once again, all you have to do is fill out an application. Stacy's going to look them over and make sure all the I's are dotted and the T's are crossed because she's not going to let those babies go to <laughs> just anybody, not. I'm no. going to guarantee you. <laughs> and we love that about her. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And always a need for volunteers at the shelter? Yes, always. We have so much work with puppies and kittens. It's just unbelievable how much work 
to take good care of them. Um, so anyone who has time to volunteer, whether it's socializing them, sitting with them, so staff can do what they need to do, or helping clean um, so we can get it done faster, so we can take care of everything else. It, any, anything people can give us. Is and I love walking in the door there because the laundry is right there. It always smells like fresh, clean laundry. <laughs> and so obviously you need laundry detergent and all those good things yes. too. Anything that you would use in your own house, we use a hundred times. So laundry soap, bleach, um, dryer sheets, um, puppy pads, puppy pads, <laughs> okay. uh, anything like that. Dish soap, we go through a lot of dish soap because we clean a lot of um, dishes and um, from all of their food bowls. Um, and wet, wet cat food. Wet cat food is always a need. Okay. Um, we like to use. Um, a chicken pate, but if you can't find it, because sometimes it's difficult to find any wet cat food is is acceptable. Okay. Yeah. All right. And so, what's the best way to um, to get in touch with either of you if you want to donate an item or put in an application? What's the best way? Come on out or phone call. What's either come yeah. out or phone call. Mm -hmm. um, call the shelter three five six four seven nine four. We are there. If if it's after hours, leave a message. We will get that message okay. and get back to you. Thank you both very much for being here. So Take much. care. Please stay tuned for Dr. Don McMaster following these messages. Greetings, everyone, and welcome to Talk of the Town. I'm Dr. Don McMaster, president of Alpena Community College. I'm pleased to have as our guest this morning Amanda Sumricks, director of the SIP grant at Alpena Community College. Welcome, Amanda. Thank you. So we had a neat event yesterday yes, organized by you. Yes. Uh, for the staff and the community, and we demonstrated something called an anatomosh table. Can yep. you fill in the details? I can. So, um, just a little bit of background about the SIP grant, um, which is funding the anatomosh table purchase. Um, the SIP grant was awarded to ACC last fall, and it's a five year grant from the Department of Education, and it's funded for $2,250,000. So, um, part of that grant helps implement some new technology into our nursing program. And one of those pieces of technology is called an anatomage table, um, and it's a virtual anatomy dissection table, which is kind of a mouthful, but it's basically just a big table that's a touch screen and it has a life-size virtual cadaver on it. Um, so it was pretty cool to see it in person, and um, I don't have any training in healthcare, but through the procurement process and researching this, um, I've learned a lot about it. So it was awesome to have someone from the company come to campus and show the software and what it can do. Um, and it was great that some of our faculty could attend and see how the table can benefit them too. Um, they showed, the um, representative from Anatomize showed all of the different function of, functions of the table and um, the cadavers that are loaded on the table are virtual, but they're based on real people that have donated their bodies to science, so it's really a lifelike um, experience that you can dissect the cadaver, um, go into different organs and dissect them, kind of zoom in with your fingers, and the quality is amazing. Um, so it'll really benefit our program, I think, and get us on the cutting edge of technology in that way. Um, another benefit of it that the representative was telling us was that um, when you make a dissection and a cut in a cadaver, you can't go back. I mean, that's it. You can't put the heart back together or an organ back together, but with the virtual dissection table, you can make a cut and go back to the um, human that's intact. So. That was really cool. The, that's such a thorough and uh, accurate description. It was uh, as a teaching tool. Yes. It seemed uh, phenomenal to me. Yes. And uh, there's so many um, opportunities for instruction, um, uh, which, you, like you pointed out, the dissection, the opportunity to put slides in a package that then could be almost like a PowerPoint presentation. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, the capacity to, with just a swipe, go from you know, uh, the skin to the circulatory system, to right. the nervous system, to the musculature, to the circulatory, amazing. Right, it was, and he did a couple demonstrations to show some capabilities like that. Um, one of them, for example, was he zoomed in and did um, just the veins so that you could see the blood flow and it was, um, the blood was moving up towards the brain and you could see the direction it was going, um, which was awesome to see. Another benefit of the table is that it can be hooked up into um, a projection system. So whether you're in a classroom or in a video conferencing setting, you can project it to whoever you're presenting to. 
So it can help um, students not only on campus, but also maybe some dual enrolled or students that are off campus too. That is a huge point. And uh, of course that was kind of music to my ears as mm -hmm. well because we're doing a lot of that. A lot of dual enrollment and a lot of video conferencing to, to provide dual enrollment. So the notion that at a central location like on main campus, we right. might be able to uh, disperse uh, this sort of high quality interesting content to to uh, kind of remote regional small k-12s is very appealing right, right. I, uh, I have to say I do a knowledge bowl judging here um, most Wednesdays and I see every school has uh, just a core if of really bright yeah. young people yeah and the idea of serving them this is uh, very appealing yes it is and it'll also um, benefit students not only in the nursing program but um, biology or anatomy courses it'll benefit too um, the demonstration yesterday showed that they also have some animal scans um, everything from an earthworm to a horse so they can show um, for different zoology or biology courses too it would benefit. Now as a horse lover yourself yes. that had to be really interesting. <laughs> yes he showed that on my request which was awesome to see. Yeah. I could go on about the horse anatomy, the human anatomy not so much. It is amazing though when you get that level of detail uh, in such a, uh, an interesting format you can see how things hook together and just yes. what a, a really a miraculous thing it is that we even function. It is, I know <laughs> it, it is. There's so much to it. So our hope is to get two tables. Yes. And uh, funded by the SIP grant. Mm -hmm. uh, one here in Alpena, one in Oscoda. Yep. So, um, you know, the folks in Oscoda may not realize, or the folks in Alpena may not realize, we have a pretty uh, vibrant campus down at Oscoda. Yes. And, um, you know, and we have an LPN uh, track of our LPN program down there. So I think they would to be delighted to get this technology. Yes, I think so too. And there's only, um, we were able to see the map of where different tables are located throughout the state and what other institutions have them. And there's only a handful of other institutions that have these. So to have one in Alpena and Oscoda will be awesome for Northeast Michigan. Agreed. Yeah. Now there's lots of things going on in the SIP grant, not just, not just these tables. Right. And uh, you are uh, in the f stages of procuring four mannequins for our, uh, uh, our nursing program um, and this is a huge part of our development of that area. Can you speak to that? Yeah, sure. So the nursing mannequins were another thing that I was able to learn about throughout the procurement process. Um, they're um, medical mannequins that simulate any range of reactions from medications or different diseases. Um, we're in the process of procuring a childbirth mannequin so it's a pregnant woman who um, can give birth to a baby and both of these mannequins um, can speak, the baby cries when it comes out, it can grunt, um, they can do different movements, their eyes follow you. So it's really a real life experience for those nursing students and um, we'll give them you know, the experience of delivering a baby throughout the simulation. Um, and then we're also looking at two um, regular adult mannequins that can do the same range of reactions um, and those are pretty advanced as well a lot of medical schools have those so it'll be awesome to have it at a community college like ours absolutely true I've seen the uh, the childbirth mannequin and it is uh, pretty lifelike yes. I mean I'm a guy so right. I, I've been an observer only right but uh, an amazing piece of technology and uh, the programming of them to to create scenarios that students would have to deal with, both good and bad, is a phenomenal part of it. Yes. So we have about 30 seconds left. Anything else you'd like to add? Um, gosh, I think it's just exciting that we're, we're able to get these um, technology and this equipment in Alpena. And um, when we get it, I hope that we'll have an open house and the public can come see it too because it's awesome to have in our area. Wonderful. Well yeah. put. And uh, we will have an open house and we'll invite the public. Thank you, Amanda, for operating the grant. Uh, thank you folks for watching Talk of the Town. We'll see you again next week. This has been Talk of the Town with your host, Nancy Smitham and Dr. Don McMaster. For a list of community events taking place in Northeast Michigan, please visit our website at WBKB11.com and click on our community link. This has been a Thunder Bay Broadcasting Corporation production.